Hi, my name is Andrew Frages, and welcome back once again to another flow series here. Uh, we're continuing on with the theme of opportunity management yet again. In this one, we're going to take two of the flows we've previously built um, and combine them together and also improve them a little bit, adding some best practices in. So just to remind you of the two flows we did previously. So in some of the previous blogs, uh, you would have seen that we did a flow on generating a renewal opportunity um, when an opportunity is closed one. So I'm not going to go through exactly what it does um, in this one because we'll go through it in the combined one. But in particular, the benefit of this was that when, you know, your sales team closed one an opportunity, they've got the contract done and everything else, you want to make sure you create a renewal if you're a subscription-based business, make it nice and easy. One thing I want to highlight is if you remember, we had a loop and we had to create records inside of that loop. It's important to remember this because we're going to optimize this in our new one. Another one we did, which was last week's one, very simple one, um, and that is collecting all the opportunities uh, that are related to the same account and marking them as closed loss. So if we close one a deal, uh, there's multiple opportunities in flight, we want to close the other ones. So how do we take these two record trigger flows, put them together? You can see there's a common theme and it's around closing the opportunity. So I've built this brand new uh, flow and that's taken the best of the both ones and it's added them together. So we're gonna start off with a record trigger flow. Uh, we're gonna make sure that it's only when a record is updated and after the record is saved. In this uh, one in particular, we're gonna make sure stage name is changed. So if you remember back to the original opportunity renewal, we didn't really have stage name is changed there. We're gonna make sure that the stage name is changed and that the stage name is equal to close one. So that means it's gonna to change to close one. So once we have our conditions, um, this is where we start to see the combination of the flows come together. The very simple one, which was close loss, any related opportunities to the account uh, once this close one occurs, is going to go first. So that's an update records uh, element. We're going to map the account ID is equal to record account ID and is closed equals false. So that means the record's still open. We're going to set the stage name to close loss. Now, you can expand on these conditions further because you know you might have different uh, products that you want to sell in combat in tandem, right? So you might have a product on one side of the business um, that you want to sell as well as on the other side of the business at the same time. So adding those conditions would make it a bit more finite rather than just close lotting or opportunities. Or you could even do it based on a certain stage. So if it's in uh, contract negotiation, then we won't close loss or we'll let it keep going. Then we're going to go straight into our opportunity renewal part, right? So we've done the first part. Now we're going to our renewal aspect, which is starting off with get products. Uh, they get products fairly simple. Opportunity ID is equal to the record opportunity ID. And we're looking at the opportunity product object. We're going to store all the records uh, in a collection variable. Then get contact roles. Same thing again, opportunity ID equals record opportunity ID. We're going to store all the records. Now we're going to create the new renewal opportunity. So before we do that, I've created a formula variable over here. And that is going to be our renewal date. So what I've done is the record close date plus 365 days. So from when it closed, we're going to add a whole year. Uh, you can make this a bit more dynamic. Uh, if you stored on the opportunity, the, the contract end date, uh, you could have that in as well so that or the length of the contract, so maybe 12 months, or if it's in days, it calculates it in days and automatically has that field plus another field. So then we're gonna go ahead and create a renewal opportunity, right? So we've got account ID equals the record account ID. So we're using the same account link. The amount is the same. Um, you may even want to create a form and let's say you've got a 3% increase um, every renewal as a clause in your contract. You can create a formula around that. Close date is the renewal date. Forecast category, we're going to emit it for now because you're creating it early for the renewal. So you don't want it to appear in any forecasting or anything like that. Uh, the name is the word renewal with a pipe delimiter followed by the record name. So the, the original opportunity name, but we're taking the uh, renewal aspect of it. Next step, we're going to confirm the renewal. 
owner ID. We're going to set that based on the previous record. Price book is the same. Very important to set the price book because you need that for the opportunity products. Stage name needs analysis. That's probably the first stage there. And type is renewal. So I have you can set up different record types. I've set up a record type of renewal, and this one's going to be triggered for that. Now, once we've done that, we have our decision split. And you can see starting to already look a little bit different to the one before. So we have a decision based on whether or not it has a product. So we've got our record collection before. Is it now false? So that means it does have a product. So it's not now, otherwise it has no products, right? So it's only two paths realistically that this is going to go down. When it does have products, what we're going to do is we're going to loop through that collection. And in that, we're going to update that. So we're going to update that with the current item loop uh, line item ID. We want to set that to null, right? an empty string. The reason is if you're inserting a new record, you can't map the Salesforce ID because right? Salesforce generates that Salesforce ID automatically. Now, if you're using a record collection variable, uh, Salesforce automatically maps and stores the Salesforce ID of the records. And therefore, because it's a field on insert, it automatically tries to map it in your flow. So you need to wipe that out. The other bit is create item, and that is the opportunity ID. And we're setting that to the opportunity ID from the create renewal, so the bit before, rather than the opportunity ID. And then finally, we go ahead and we've got outside of the loop this time. The reason we do it uh, uses less API calls. It's also part of the Salesforce bank best practices, right? We're gonna use our record collection and it's gonna insert multiple records at once. Very simple, very easy. Then we're gonna repeat that process again, but with contact roles, right? We set that same decision, but on the contact roles, uh, we're gonna look for it. The update assignment this time is contact uh, role ID, make sure it empty it. And again, update the opportunity ID. Then we've got that Again, best practice here, having the create element outside of the loop and it's multiple records from a record collection. And on top of all that, if you remember before with our renewal, we created a call task against it. So we go ahead, we go create one call task. It's gonna have owner ID mapped, priority mapped to normal status, uh, not started, subject confirmed customer is renewal, task subtype is a call and what ID is the renewal you created. So there you have a very simple flow uh, combining the two flows we had before, right? So instead of having multiple flows, very similar conditions on the record trigger of an opportunity, we're combining them all together into one. Now, what I personally like to do is to try and get as many flows, uh, if you're doing it on the same object, into one. Obviously, there are exceptions to this. Uh, if you have too many, then you can start to branch out using subflows, but also best practices in mind as well. So your naming conventions, so you can stay up to date because the longer the flow goes, the more confusing it gets. Um, and also making sure you keep that create records outside of the loop. So there you have some, some best practices. I uh, hope you guys learned some, a lot of this um, and we'll see you next time.